Throughout the next 60 minutes or so, I'll be speaking to the UN diplomat who is currently leading the team as well as a number of key staffers to help us have a better understanding on what UNESCO is doing to help Timor-Leste in these three important sectors. Thank you very much and welcome to the program. Uh, it is great to have you in, the, in this program. So, uh, to start with, could you please tell me who you are and uh, your background, uh, a little bit of your background, if, uh, if that's okay. Thank you very much, Francis. Uh, my name is Shabazz. I am director of UNESCO, um, based in Jakarta. And uh, the office in Jakarta has a special role. Uh, it is a regional science bureau for Asia and the Pacific, covering 49 countries. Also, the office is a cluster office, as you say, for five countries, including Timor Leste. The other countries include Indonesia, Malaysia, then also uh, the Brunei and Philippines. So it's a very interesting office. And uh, I'm a regional director for science and technology for Asia Pacific. And also I'm representative of UNESCO to these five countries. So that's my role. And I am also a professor um, in uh, a number of countries. As a professor in an honorary position, I used to be a full professor in Australia. So uh, my job is to implement UNESCO's programs. As you know, UNESCO is United Nations Education, Science and Culture Organization. And this organization, UNESCO, is a special agency of uh, United Nations. We also cover programs in communication and information, so very, very important for GMN. Uh, as you know, we have the Daily Media Forum jointly with the government of Timor Leste. That's in the area of communication and information. But also, there is another important area which is social and human sciences. And that's an area to make sure that we are looking into social inequalities and uh, issues related to youth and sports issues related to making sure no one is left behind. What brought you to UNESCO, to the UN system? Um, in 1998, I was working in Australia uh, as director of, uh, for the Australian government dealing with the issues of water management, especially the issue of irrigation. So, uh, and that issue was very important in the murray darling because of many com conflicts between the stakeholders. How do we give water to environment? How do we give water to irrigation? How do we make sure that all stakeholders have a say into the future of water resources in Australia? That was of great interest to UNESCO as well. And at the same time, I was a professor in a university um, dealing with the water issues at a global level. And I was a very regular participant in the UNESCO program. I used to be chair of a program called Hydrology for Environment Life. Policy. So that introduced me to UNESCO and UNESCO people knew me. So I applied for a job for the chief of the section on water and sustainable development. And that job was for all member states of UNESCO based in Paris, so 195 countries, and to deal with the issues of water in Africa, in Latin America, in Arab states, in Asia Pacific. And that really attracted me that if I move from my position which was a government position with Australia, as well as an academic position to go to Paris, then maybe I can help uh, billions of people around the world. So that attracted me to the job, and uh, I joined uh, UNESCO in April uh, in the year 2008. So from 1998 to 2008, my work with UNESCO was an, as an expert uh, moving many of the programs from outside. So from 2008 to now, I've been work implementing UNESCO's program, starting as a Chief of Water and Sustainable Development, and then I moved to Jakarta, and I'm so happy that with this position, I know the people of Timor Leste in a very nice way, because this is one of my roles now. What's the difference between the academic world and the government world with uh, UNESCO? Um, academic world is also very interesting. Uh, in the academic world, we have uh, a lot more freedom. 
and especially in Australia, I used to even um, uh, look into the policies of the Prime Minister of the country and I would criticize them in a very academic way. Uh, whereas the work in uh, uh, research organizations like CSRO, Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, uh, there was another very delicate role as an interface between the politicians and the public and the professors have to guide the society to move forward. So moving into UNESCO, you need to know a lot more diplomacy. So you need to be able to say the right things without uh, um, making any stakeholder uh, feel offended and everyone should be equal in the system of the United Nations. So how do we move forward the whole world uh, by showing good examples by showing what is wrong without offending somebody and at the same time uh, uh, bringing uh, resources from many different nations and working with the local people to have a better society for the future. So very completely different roles. But being a professor, you have the scientific rigor. So you are publishing, you are looking into scientific theories, you have students, you can uh, challenge uh, the boundaries and limits of science. Whereas in, as a director of UNESCO, you can look into what the world needs to become a better, sustainable world where we give the rights of the people like right to water, the right to be able to live a good life, the right to education. So, from, so that's like a bigger stage, but the scientific rigor gives you the ideas to be able to understand what science can do to help people, what science can do at the United Nations. So they are complementary, but I enjoyed the freedom of expression as a professor uh, to be able to criticize the um, policies of the government, which was only Australia, and as a uh, director of UNESCO to be able to look into what is happening in the world and guide in a non-intrusive way uh, nations how they can move forward on the ladder of sustainable development. Uh, you have a mix of ex experience working uh, in first world countries and uh, third world countries. What's the difference have you been able to see? Um, uh, I was born and raised in Pakistan, a very big country, more than 200 million people. And it's a struggling country because of uh, many issues of unemployment, uh, the issues related to education and literacy, issues related to uh, the freedom of expression, Issues related to the safety of journalists. So all those issues are within uh, a developing country context, and uh, we can relate it to any country in the world. It does not have to be the name Pakistan, because these are the typical issues. In a developed country, uh, the difference was the resources were there for the university, so you could mobilize those. It's not a free resource. You have to work hard to. Get those resources, but the resources can be made available to pursue uh, the ideas of uh, research uh, and also uh, the basic human rights in one way or the other are enforced already. People are able to say what they want to say, and also, very importantly, uh, the basic needs are satisfied so people can go to the next level uh, to think about the sustainability of the society. So that was the kind of difference uh, for me in the two systems. But again, uh, at the end of the day, now with the United Nations 2030 agenda and sustainable development goal, still there are social inequalities in the first world. If you say, I don't really like the world, first world and third world. You, the countries who are a little bit more advanced and countries who are on the pathway of development. So those countries who are more advanced in terms of their development, Still, the social inequalities are huge. People living in regional areas, in smaller areas. I used to work with farmers in the Murray Darling Basin, in the wool sheds of uh, Marambichi, Koliambli. These are very interesting areas. So, if you compare them with the countries like Pakistan, they are also struggling with the same issue. They do not have enough water for their irrigation. They do not have uh, the right kind of social services uh, available to them. So, the issues at the core of all of this are still the same. Uh, we are dealing with an unequal world where a few people have too much and a lot more people have very little. 
and that applies to all countries in the world after I've been to all continents. This is my conclusion. So, um, if we want to make a difference in this world, we need to understand the core of these issues and problems and we need to get rid of this notion of whether a country is more developed or less developed, how we can bring them together, understanding the issues and cooperate with each other. That's really the beauty of the United Nations system. The nations can sit together and can share experiences and learn from each other. Would you be able to share with us some of your uh, best or most success stories since you work with uh, UNESCO? Um, there are many, I would say, but it's not only me, it's a team. Uh, like right now, my office is in Jakarta. Uh, also, we have an antenna here uh, in Timor Leste. We have a project office in the Philippines and we are helping Malaysia as well as uh, Brunei and all the other countries. There are quite a few a number of projects which I can highlight. Let me start from Timor Leste because it's more interesting for the local people here. We had a very amazing project with the help of Boika, uh, which was to provide the basic uh, uh, facilities for a science and mathematics education. So very important. And in the process of build the labs which are based on the local material and the uh, uh, people can relate to their environment, people can relate to their geology, people can relate to the issues locally, understanding about the human body, understanding about stars, but in a Timorese way. So that has been a very successful project and also producing uh, the resource books for the teachers and equipping the laboratories and also looking into the future by improving the curricula. I think that has been a big highlight for me. Um, uh, while I've been working in Jakarta and with Timor Leste. And uh, Timorese people are great people. And in my view, again, going back to the original discussion, uh, does it have to be somebody from Australia or the US or somewhere to win a Nobel Peace Prize or Nobel Science Prize? It can be a Timorese. And that's the way we believe that. If we build all these uh, facilities together, if we learn together, there can be a Nobel uh, physics scientists from here, like from my own country, Pakistan, there was a Nobel uh, physicist there, so I believe same can be done. Another very interesting story for me is uh, right as I arrived today, there is a lot of uh, rainfall, and my work has been in the area of water management. So I have a big project following a huge flood in Pakistan in 2010, which affected 20 million people. So imagine almost about 18, 17, 18 times the size of the molesty. So 20 million people got affected. And the losses were more than $10 billion. And many people lost their lives and still they are struggling to build their houses. So how do we can improve the lives of those people by giving early warning? So in that regard, we have built a state-of-the-art flood forecasting early warning system which uses satellites, like you use satellites for your communication. We use satellites to say how much rain and where it is happening. From the mountains, which are more than 8,000 meters high, all the way to the oceans. So satellite technology, uh, also a very special kind of automatic weather stations, which can uh, tell us rainfall, which can tell us how much is the sunlight happening there, how much is evaporation happening, how much is wind, and this goes through the um, telephone networks and immediately goes through the computer. Somebody can check on the internet, but also it goes into a computer model, as we say. And it can uh, bring together the analysis for the whole country to say, if in the Himalayas so much rainfall will happen, how it will translate and in how many days, which city, which part of the country will be affected. So we have been doing this work for eight years with the help of the government of Japan for a significant investment also with, by bringing the experts from all over the world. So I just handed over this project and the final models to the government of Pakistan who is already using them. And we have trained so many young Pakistanis in the process who will be now training other people like from Afghanistan and having science for peace. So I think that's also a very, very big success story for us. And maybe in the area of uh, 
culture, we have some very interesting things which are happening. Uh, how do we uh, make culture as a driver? So we have a special publication from UNESCO here in Timor-Leste where we have identified a number of things which are special about Timor-Leste. Of course, we have very special coffee, only in Timor-Leste it is. But also you have some very special uh, natural uh, heritage related things like for example you have uh, the caves which are one of the very best caves in terms of the rock art. So and also you have Nino Kona Santana Park. So that can be used to take Timor Leste to the next level of uh, development. We have been doing it in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Philippines and in many other countries. So. Uh, there are those kind of uh, success stories as well. How can we mobilize the people to uh, do things together? How can we mobilize the youth to have uh, more action through uh, sports and create peace in society? We will look into more details about the, uh, the projects and your work in Timor-Leste uh, in the next segment of the interview. But to finish off this, this session, would you mind sharing a little bit about your family life because being a diplomat it's always associated with being so busy uh, a lot of travels um, how is family life working for you uh, my wife is also a scientist uh, she's a medical scientist and uh, my son is now doing a double degree into artificial intelligence and environment so very similar idea so most of the time at home we are studying so we are three students. So in that regard, uh, there is a better understanding between us that we must continue to um, progress ideas and we should not only build our careers, but we should help others. So uh, it's hard, certainly. But uh, if you have uh, uh, understanding partners, then life can be a lot more interesting. And um, the good thing I can also share with you, Francis, is uh, coming from Pakistan, going to first to study in the UK. I have my master, PhD, Doctor of Science from UK. Then living in Australia, this is a tremendous experience. But then having been posted to Paris for about five years, and then coming to Jakarta uh, with 260 plus million people in Indonesia. Knowing about Timor Leste, this is the most wonderful part of life. So wherever I go, my family has uh, traveled with me. So, uh, and the best thing I think about my son is he has become a global citizen. He understands the issues of the world. Maybe uh, if he was just in Australia, he would not have understood so many of what needs to be done and how can we play a little role to make this world a better place. So, there is a lot of good understanding and sometimes there is not so much understanding because I have been away for too long many times. Very interesting story. So uh, we will finish this session here, Professor Shabas, and we will talk more about the, the work with the UN, the UNESCO, uh, on the next segment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for staying with us on Diplomata. Professor Shabas has kindly shared with us his background, his experience, and also his involvement with the UN. So in this session, I'll be talking to Professor Shabas about the work he's doing with UNESCO and also what UNESCO has been able to achieve in Timor-Leste. To begin with, you are leading a regional office. But I'm still interested in knowing why do you have to be based in Jakarta rather than Timor-Leste since you're doing the work in Timor-Leste? Uh, UNESCO structure is very interesting. Um, UNESCO work in Timor-Leste is not only the team here. We have of course the team in Jakarta, but also the, there is a much bigger team in Paris as well. We are all connected together. And also uh, in Timor-Leste, we have UNESCO, the National Commission, which is also doing wonderful work and it is aligned with the priorities of UNESCO and it links with uh, many other offices as well. So that's how uh, the structure works. Uh, at the request of uh, the government of Timor-Leste, a special antenna office was created. So this office 
um, looks into direct matters related to the molesty, including uh, integration with the resident coordinator and the UN system here, day-to-day -day interaction with our colleagues in the National Commission in the Ministry of Education. But also, we have to make sure that uh, Timor Leste's work is not isolated, so we link it with the other countries through what we call South-South cooperation and North-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. So that's the structure, that's the reason uh, that we have an office in Jakarta and we have our headquarters in Paris. There are 53 field offices of UNESCO around the world. And Timor Leste is a very important country as a young nation. Uh, which needs a lot of uh, help, but also there are so many ideas which are coming out of Timor Leste which other people need to know as well. So th those are some of the reasons that we have a team in Jakarta, team here, bigger team in Paris and our other field offices. And in terms of performing your daily tasks, how do you coordinate with all these offices, especially with the daily office? Our uh, Delhi office, if it is my choice, Francis, I would love to live here. It's a wonderful place, very nice beaches, good food, nice people. So, uh, uh, but because our duties are for a number of nations, so uh, we have to work in a way that we can deliver to those nations in the best possible way. Timor Leste is a priority for us. And uh, that's why the antenna office with the staff here, we day-to-day uh, -day they will be linking very closely with the um, UN system here. That's why we are on the, uh, these premises. Uh, and uh, very regularly they will be reporting to me and I will be giving them ideas like developing proposals, looking into deliverables, how the projects are being done, how our interactions are going. And many of what we call the program specialists because we are trying to implement the programs here in education, in science, in culture, in communication, information, and social and human sciences. They also have very regular contact with the office and they will be visiting here and the team from here also uh, visits in terms of our strategic discussions and alignment. So it's a very, very close cooperation. And with uh, the communication information technologies like with Skype and phone and all of that, uh, really you don't need to be in any given location and you can still do many things. Uh, but of course you need to be on ground to have uh, uh, more in-depth discussions with the stakeholders. So that's how we work and we are a family working together within the broader UN system. Now with the programs, what are the programs UNESCO is working on in Timor Leste at the moment? Um, maybe I go UNESCO's mandate by mandate. Uh, so starting from education. We have been helping uh, Timor Leste in a number of areas. So one of those areas is uh, uh, quality education. And quality education in mathematics and sciences. So we have uh, projects, uh, previous and current, where we are helping improve the curricula in uh, partnership with the government of Timor Leste, the Ministry of Education. Uh, but also we have been working in the area of education for, uh, for example, education for sustainable development and linking Timor Leste with the other nations with what we call the green schools and we have established green schools here. Uh, we have also worked on uh, uh, non-formal education through the communities of learnings, what we call CLCs, and that project has also been very successful. How do we provide skills of hair cutting, making, uh, let's say, special kind of bakery, or having the skills for stitching, uh, hoteling. So those areas we have also been helping the more lessly. So that's education in which we have quite a lot of things we are working together. Uh, with our National Commission and with the Ministry of Education and with the people uh, in a number of uh, locations. Then is the area of uh, sciences which is um, 
uh, which we have quite a lot of things, especially uh, we have been helping the engineers here in Timor-Leste in building the basic qualifications at the same level as anyone else in the world. So we have been upgrading uh, how do we accredit engineers um, and helping the uh, engineer association Intel here. Uh, also with the University of Timor-Leste, we have been helping them to connect uh, through what we call Connect Asia, which is a project to connect universities into uh, wider network with Japan and others. So that has helped us um, deliver many lectures from top professors uh, and people in Timor-Leste can connect with them. So th those are quite interesting areas for them. In the area of water management, we have uh, help in doing uh, studies with the University of Timor-Leste about the issue of water pollution. So that's uh, uh, science. And in culture, uh, I would like to draw your attention, Francis, to this very beautiful publication which UNESCO has done with the uh, government of Timor-Leste, and this is done with the National Geographic. So it's a very authenticated uh, book, and it highlights a number of things which are so special about Timor-Leste. For example, the special arts and crafts which people are doing, the special kind of coffee and the coffee variety which is here is uh, as unique as the coffee in Ethiopia, the origin of uh, coffee. The way people make coffee is very special in terms of the use of wood and uh, how they grind coffee, how they make coffee. This can become a UNESCO intangible heritage. In uh, terms of uh, Thais, very special uh, product from uh, Timor-Leste from a cultural point of view and it, it is being promoted now to also become intangible heritage. Also, uh, you have one of the best, uh, uh, what we call the rock art in the world. Uh, more than 30,000 years old, the kind of pigments which have been used. So UNESCO has been working with many universities in Australia to help understand the age of those rocks and that is also very special for Timor-Leste. Uh, then we have been helping the government to protect, preserve, enhance Nino Kone Santana Park and there are a number of studies which we have been promoting uh, for Nino Kone Santana Park to become a UNESCO park as a man and biosphere reserve. So these are also the future coming work in that area as well. In the area of communication and information, which is very close to uh, the work which you do, we have been helping build the capacity of the press council and the journalists here and uh, the students and the university so that the curricula is uh, so good that the journalists which are coming into future, they should be at the same standard as anywhere else in the world and we also work together towards a free press here and that has been very very successful with the help of government of Netherlands and uh, we are going to have a big uh, media forum uh, starting from tomorrow so this has been all key achievements for us and in the area of uh, youth we have been promoting youth and sports uh, we have been celebrating UNESCO's special days like uh, science day uh, we have been also promoting uh, special education for girls here. So uh, there are a number of areas where uh, UNESCO has been very, very active. And there are forthcoming projects uh, uh, linked with all these areas as well. Uh, with the programs in which you work together with the uh, Timor-Leste government, how has it been? Timor-Leste government is very eager. Uh, irrespective of which party it is, because it's about improving the lives of people. So if there is good education, only then there can be a good society. And also uh, for the last uh, six and a half years I've seen, uh, the priorities of the government are very much interested in terms of uh, providing education which can provide jobs to the people. So technical and vocational education is of great interest, which is also of great interest to UNESCO as well. So uh, it is very rewarding to work uh, with the government. And uh, very humble people, I would say, Timorese are very nice people, very humble people, uh, very eager to learn, uh, very vocal in uh, expressing their views in a nice way. So we have learned so much 
from Timor Leste in terms of the needs of the communities for uh, communities of learning, for the needs for science and math education. Very active feedback that whether we are doing the right thing or we are not doing the right thing. And also very grateful for international cooperation. So when we bring the experts from around the world, uh, there is a very good reception. And when uh, these experts go back, they bring nice memories. Also, we have uh, a very active uh, uh, dialogue with the diplomatic communities here, with uh, the ambassadors, for example, with the recent projects we have been doing about uh, the areas of water or engineering. There has been very good involvement from the embassy of Malaysia and other ASEAN-related embassies as well. So the, there is very good uh, reception to the programs. And that's why it's important for us to continue working with Timor Leste because such ideas are needed for nation building. Apart from the government, uh, any other partners you work with in Timor Leste? In Timor Leste, we have a range of partners. Um, uh, other than government, very importantly, universities. So, University of Timor Leste very important. The press council is very, very important. Then in the areas of culture, uh, the artists and also uh, people working with the museums, all of them are very important. The private uh, sector overall uh, and the role they can play, they have uh, important things uh, to offer. And the broader community uh, and the networks which we make with the communities and communities of learning, uh, at large they are all of critical importance to us. And uh, in the area of engineering, the uh, Engineering Association is an independent body here, Intel, so we work with them directly as well. Any challenges you are facing? Uh, the challenge is how to make sure that there are proper resources for... Um, there must be good infrastructure. Uh, if we have very good curricula, but if there are not benches for students to sit, then we have a problem. So we need to make sure the school infrastructure is good. We need to make sure the university classrooms are state-of-the-art in the world. So Timor Leste is improving, it's moving in the right direction, but we need to continue to invest into human resource development. And that's where uh, the resources are limited. And we have to work together with the government to look into the right priorities and uh, make sure that there is uh, more and more investment into building lives of people, uh, strengthening universities, strengthening schools, giving them the right equipment and the opportunities for making sure not only for people living in Delhi, but the benefits of this development reaches to everyone throughout the Molesti. So I think that's our challenge that how we make sure everyone gets empowered and uh, how we help government. It's not the United Nations which can uh, change uh, Timor Leste, it's the people of Timor Leste. We are the servants to the people of Timor Leste. So how do we play a catalytic role, but the investment from the government goes to that level when every child in Timor Leste has the same education as anywhere else in the world. This is our dream. And eventually Timor Leste has reached a level where maybe United Nations system may not be even needed. Timor less to go and helps the other nations. So that's the dream which is in our mind. And my dream as a scientist is to have a Nobel Peace Prize winner from Timor Leste. How does the work of UNESCO fit into uh, the, the overall the overall work of the UN uh, system in Timor Leste? Um, United Nations, as you know, is about sustainable development and building peace and uh, our work, we are working uh, as one UN and we are working together to the same goal, the sustainable development goals, which are 17 of them. So we are feeding into that work and we have one leader, which is the resident coordinator right now, Mr. Uh, Rai Triviti is doing a wonderful job. So we are working together as a team as I said before, to serve the people of Timor Leste um, and to provide what is best which can be brought together from the rest of the world. So we don't see any difference anymore in between uh, different parts of UN. Uh, we are offering a service to the people of Timor Leste through 
our specialist knowledge and areas, but coordinated through our resident coordinator and the UN system here. Hello, could you please tell me what you do within the UNESCO office every day and what is the role of Professor Shabash in your, in your work? Okay, um, so um, I am the office coordinator for the Dili Antenna office. Um, because we're set up as an antenna office, it means we don't have full staff here in Timor-Leste. Um, most are based in Jakarta, our program specialists along with Shabazz and our administrative team. So I am the liaison um, between the um, direction coming from Jakarta and the action happening in Timor-Leste on the ground. Um, I work with the National Commission to ensure that our work is carried out and to get ideas for potential projects for the future. Um, and I also work with the UNCT, the UN country team, um, as a head of agency to determine the UN's um, objectives and how UNESCO can align with those. Um, because Shabazz is not in the country all of the time, um, I work closely with him via email and Skype to keep him informed of the decisions of the UN as well as the National Commission um, and any requests or conversations that we have with partners in the country for how we can further help. How long have you been working in Timor? I've only been in Timor for six months. So how, I'm still very How have young. you found Timor-Leste? I really love Timor-Leste. I feel very lucky to be here um, and especially to be here right now um, at this time. It feels there's a lot of um, momentum for development and improvement in the country and everyone is very engaged in that. Um, I think it's a very hopeful country and a, and a very exciting time to be here. I understand that you're working with a number of Timorese counterparts. How has it been working with, with this uh, group of people? Um, yeah, we work with a lot of different um, Timorese agencies and um, organizations. And I find everyone to be quite engaged and excited about the work that we're doing. Um, they will provide us with different ideas of where we can go with that, connections to other people who are doing research. They're, they want to provide as much as they can so that we have, um, we have the best projects that we can. So I've, they've all been very supportive and encouraging and helpful um, with our work. And just very briefly, how has it been uh, for you working with Professor Shabazz? Um, it's, yeah, it's, I like working with Shabazz. He's very excited about Timor-Leste. He would, I think, be here full-time if he could, if we had that capacity. Um, but he is very excited about our projects, um, and when we need him, he always comes here immediately. So even though he's not in the country all the time, he is always available to us um, because he feels it very important for us to be involved in this work and um, so it's it's been very easy to communicate with him and to get his support when we need it. Hello and uh, welcome to the program. Could you please to start with tell me what you do uh, in UNESCO? Thank you very much and thank you for having us here today. Uh, my name is Ming Kuo Lim. I am the advisor for communication and information for the UNESCO office based in Jakarta. And our office takes care of Indonesia, Malaysia, Timor Leste, Brunei, and the Philippines. And in my capacity as the advisor for communication and information, we provide um, policy advice for uh, member states on communication and information issues. Uh, we provide capacity building for journalists, for um, educators of journalism. We also conduct awareness raising programs and activities to raise awareness uh, in the region on the importance of freedom of expression, access to information and safety of journalists. You are based in Jakarta and coordinating the work uh, in a few countries. How do you coordinate with Timor then? Mm -hmm. uh, UNESCO has a very interesting structure in which we have both national offices um, as well as regional offices. And the UNESCO office in Jakarta is the regional office uh, for this um, few countries that I have mentioned. And we work very closely with the Dili, uh, Dili Antenna office in which we have a physical presence 
and we do a lot of work with uh, our partners on the ground and we do a lot of work uh, through our national commission uh, for UNESCO of Timor Leste and that is how we function so we do a lot of partnership and a lot of engagement uh, both through our office in Jakarta as well as with our office from uh, Dili. I understand that you were based in Paris before but covering Timor as well. How did you do that? Oh, um, UNESCO's office or the headquarters is based in Paris. So before I was posted in Jakarta, um, my role was uh, assisting programs in Southeast Asia but based in the Paris office. So in fact I have been visiting Timor Leste since 2010. Uh, and we also run different programs at that time. If I remember correctly, we were doing a media in, uh, development assessment in Timor Leste, uh, and that was back in 2010. And one of the outcome of this uh, media assessment was actually the uh, suggestion and recommendation that Timor Leste, in order to have a more vibrant and uh, independent media, there should be some kind of a self-regulatory mechanism, such as a press council. Um, and we were very happy that over the years, uh, in, uh, Timor Leste has developed a, a press council. Um, and that is, in our perspective, a positive direction into having a more vibrant, independent and pluralistic media in Timor Leste. And with the Press Council in Timor Leste, how do you, how do you work with them? We have been working with the Timor Leste Press Council for uh, since their inception, and even before that, as I mentioned, we did the original uh, assessment on what is the need of uh, the country in terms of media development, and one of the suggestion is the creation of a media council or press council, and we convene uh, a lot of stakeholders. Uh, journalists, media practitioners, uh, journalist associations, and we discuss how to go about it. And we also invited uh, other more established press councils, experts from around the region to come here. For example, we invited uh, Indonesian press council to come here, Thai press council, uh, Papua New Guinea's, uh, Philippines, all sorts of different countries to provide their experiences both challenges and opportunities, the good and the bad, to share those experiences. And we believe that sharing those experiences is very important. Um, in the end of the day, the day-to-day -day function and the day-to-day -day operation of the press is by people uh, such as uh, your kind self, and also with the journalistic community, the media press count, uh, the press council. Um, so a lot of decisions needs to be taken on the ground, and UNESCO is here to support uh, where we can, especially uh, through capacity building, uh, assisting in building the network, uh, such as linking them to the regional press councils, and also helping them with uh, all sorts of uh, awareness raising activities. Um, so we are working very closely with them. And in your work, what is the role of Mr. Shabazz in, um, in all of these things you have been telling me? Um, so our structure includes uh, several program specialists, uh, including myself, and UNESCO work on different areas. So we have culture, we have education, we have science, both social and human sciences, and we have communication and information. That's my portfolio. And uh, Dr. Shabazz Khan, as the director and representative of UNESCO, he gives the overall direction uh, for the office in all these five different areas. Um, and he provides the, uh, the, the, the guidelines. Uh, he provides us with the uh, general objective. Um, linking it to what has been decided by the UNESCO General Conference that takes place every two years in Paris headquarters. So we had at the headquarters the uh, programs, major programs that has been decided and is implemented via the regional office and where there is a national presence, we also go to the national presence to implement uh, those programs that have been decided by the headquarters. 
and with adaptations and of course customization to fit the national and local context. And since you are um, based in the same office uh, with Mr. Shabazz, how has it been like working with him? Shabazz is very hands-on, uh, so he enjoys uh, knowing the people and he enjoys knowing how activities are being done and most importantly, he likes to know about the impact of an activity and how it has impacted the lives of uh, the, the people that we work with. Because in the end of the day, we are in the business of improving people's lives if what we do in the end of the day it, and the end of the day may be a five-year day or a 10-year day or 20-year day uh, but in the end of the day if what we do uh, does not improve the lives of the people that we are working with then we need to rethink what we are actually doing so Shabazz is very interested in knowing whether we have a positive impact on uh, people's life uh, that especially all the stakeholders and partners that we work with. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much for your time. What do you do every day in your office? In my position here as an administration assistant, I provide the administration support to our colleagues in UNESCO Dili Andana office, also to our office uh, UNESCO in Jakarta. I provide also the te uh, technical and also provide the provide and also assist the implementation of the program and all activities related to UNESCO project in coordination with uh, our national stakeholder, our counterpart, and also. UN, uh, UN agency and with the government of Timor Leste. Apart from from the government of Timor Leste and the UN agencies, who are your other counterparts in your everyday work? Uh, we are working closely with uh, UNESCO National Commission and also with uh, Universidade Nacional Timor Leste, Universidade Oriental, Unital, and also the line minister of uh, some of uh, our government institutions. And how does Professor Shabas role? fit into your, your work in Delhi? Mr. Sabaskan is uh, our director who is based in Jakarta, but uh, he always uh, support the staff in Delhi Antenna office. He always open the line communication between the staff to achieve uh, our goals uh, and also how we will we will implement the UNESCO program and the project yeah, in Timor Leste. And how long have you been working with UNESCO in Timor Leste? I, I work with uh, UNESCO almost uh, five years. And um, how have you found working with UNESCO? And do you think? The UNESCO's work in Timor Leste is helping the development of Timor Leste. Yes, uh, working with, in this organization is a uh, UNESCO uh, give a contribution to a de development of uh, our beloved country Timor Leste because uh, we are providing and supporting uh, education and uh, not only education but also including uh, communication and information like uh, we have we have uh, we clo uh, working closely with the uh, uh, Conselo Empresa 
for the media project here. Professor Shabazz Khan and his UNESCO team has shared with us the information on what UNESCO is doing to help Timor-Leste advance in education, science and culture. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the program. I'm Francis Suni and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Diplomata. Bye for now.